Hello, my name is Shadley and welcome back for another episode of The Last Kingdom in RR4X and in previous episode we were doing some surveying and we found some systems but now I did uh, skip ahead a little bit again but now we have found a new system that does have some fairly promising planets. The primary doesn't have any planets orbiting it but the other one does and one of those planets actually has some oxygen in there and the other one has some Venusian atmosphere and there's several planets in there but this planet especially is one that is interesting us because it has a max population of uh, over 17 billion it doesn't have a massive gravity but it is uh, well within reason we can easily uh, colonize that but the temperature is a bit low so that is going to be a problem that is causing the colony cost to be fairly high but I did a bit of a test and with some terraforming we can make that a zero colony cost colony we just need to do add in a bit more oxygen and then add in like a 0.55 atmospheres of uh, safe greenhouse gases but yeah that should be all right uh, we'll make that into a potential colony assuming that there's no any rock or anything like that because those are still active currently once we started to colonize a bit more then we'll activate the swarm and the precursors but anyway, uh, we have the survey vessel, it is the Hand of the King's uh, survey vessel that uh, found the system. Uh, it's going to go survey the survey location one first, and then it's going to the planet. Uh, going to survey a moon first and then the planet itself. And just one moment. But anyway, uh, actually... Just a uh, first recording of the day, so things are a bit off uh, right now. But anyway, let's um, let's take it slow, one day at a time here. Okay, and one of the officers retired, but that's to be expected, really. Okay, so these survey locations take a while. Another okay, a lot of officers seem to be retiring right now. I mean, to be fair, they have reached the age of uh, 32 okay we trained another battalion of footmen here we were going to start assigning them over here basically just making a full brigade of uh, units in Veralis eventually we'll be uh, transporting some units to other planets as well now actually in terms of research I didn't go through it quite yet so we are getting the beam fire control range 32,000 which shouldn't take too long. And there's a few other things that we will be getting soon enough, I guess. For example, the small jump point stabilization module. So we can start building the jump gates between colonies, essentially. And we are actually bringing a jump tender for this uh, jump point here. We already have one on the other side of this. And actually, how far is the... It's already that far, okay, so it's not that far away. It should be able to take that uh, in due time. Anyway, let's keep on going. Now, what would be hilarious is if we found another jump point immediately and then there was Rakas on the planet. I'm jinxing it right now, but we'll see. Okay, so we do have the 6th Corvette currently in training, I believe. Let me quickly make sure that that is the case. Yep. Now it does have a little bit higher deployment time than the first version of the Hornet, so it should be a little bit better. It only has 15% of training, which frankly isn't all that much. We'll just be managing that a little bit here and it should be alright. Let's actually switch back to the turfing. Oh, we are serving the planet and we didn't find anything on the moon, I dare say. No, the small moon is empty, but the planet itself seems to be doing alright. Well, I mean, it's going to take a long while to survey that. Ooh, and civilians have constructed another freighter, so I believe we have now 11 civilian vessels total. That's not too bad, of course, they only have so much that they can do currently. Okay, the Hornet needs to 
do a bit of uh, overhauling. Um, they still got plenty of fuel though, so that shouldn't be a problem. And I've already set up so that it will automatically switch to the uh, overhaul. System surveyed. Okay. Zulfikar. Right, where is this? That's over there. And we've surveyed the entire system. There was no planets or anything here, so I suppose the... Ooh, you are actually a bit low on fuel. How about I just send you back then? You can then uh, survey around here again once you've got a new refuel and overhaul and all that. Of course, well, I'll just put you refuel, you'll probably switch that around in a little bit anyway. Okay, we got a knight battalion, so it's a bit heavier infantry. Because we don't have uh, any better armor for our infantry quite yet. But that will be sorted out eventually. Ooh. Okay, so... The planet over here... 77 million Duranium point 0.1 accessibility. 379,000 Neutronium and 2 million... Galicide. The total accessibilities are rather poor though. But at least there's a lot of uranium, it's just 0.5 social accessibility is r really poor. And I believe there's no survey potential there either, so yeah, nope. Well, what we can hope is that the Venusian planet over here has a lot of minerals, so we could then have the colony be on this one and then get the minerals from here. That would be okay-ish, I reckon. But to get there, it'll take some time. I believe we are now serving that planet, though. Okay, surely we've completed on the Hornet, that's good. Pretty much completed. Okay, so we got the beamfire control range. Now, I suppose what I could do is actually open the ship uh, designs here and take the Hornet Mark II. Actually, I can probably obsolete this one. I don't really need it anymore. But this one, okay, so you got the 80,000 right now. I believe I can save a decent bit of space in the beamfire control if I do it with the new one, so we'd still need to have the uh, 3200 tracking speed. But now we can just go three times the range and have a, a little decent hit chance, which should be about 30 something percent hit chance without any other bonuses at the max range of the particle beams, which is 60,000 kilometers. So not great, but it does save us a little bit tonnage in total, because if I remember correctly, let me pull that to the side and have a look at the beamfire control. Right, but can I not... Uh, I suppose I can just check it here. So that's 160 tons, whereas this would be 120, so that would save us 40 tons of space. We could turn that into potential... maybe a bit more fuel and maybe a bit more deployment time. For example, and that might help because the annual failure rate is a bit high on this. I'm kind of tempted to get a bit more engineering there, but at the same time, not necessarily that much required. I mean, maybe I could put an entire, like a small um, engineering, not that no, I'm just pouring out the fuel source, but anyway, small engineering might be okay, and then a little bit extra fuel, for example, and that would give us a bit longer range. It wouldn't necessarily increase the combat value of the ship, but that's alright. Well, the accuracy would actually improve, so yeah, we'll uh, create this. Because I'm sure that I can find some use for that. And then if we go for the... Okay, so we're getting the EM sensor sensitivity and thermal sensor sensitivity. I will get the new beamfire control first. So I'll add that to the queue and put it up twice. That's going to be the next one. I mean, I will need the active ground sensor strength 12 anyway, so I'll let that be the priority right now. And the jump point stabilizer, actually, I got three on that one. I could get the Saurium Harvester, I suppose. 
sooner rather than later. On the other hand, actually no, we'll get the research rate queued up. Then we'll get the Saurium Harvester. So that will take some time, of course, but we'll get there and we should be getting the last research facility. Um, in... well, it's going to take several months, though. But we will get there. I've queued up some of the medium gatekeeper or the military gatekeepers, which of course only have 5 kiloton jump capacity right now, so we'll only build those 5 and afterwards we'll just switch to... or make a bit bigger jump uh, tender for military. And that should be alright. And we will be starting to build some automated mines, because I know that there's some places where we can get decent minerals, but we can't really have a lot of population, so getting the automated mines will help us get the materials from there. Anyway, let's uh, keep on going, shall we? Okay, Tug 1 has completed order, so that means that we can start bringing in stuff for the colony there, or potential colony. Actually, I will put down the colony already, of course. It doesn't have good minerals yet, but it is still, at least if nothing else, it can at least provide a little bit of minerals and actually, oh, if it had uranium, it could produce uh, mates, uh points there. So I really wonder what we'll find at the planet there. Well, we'll find out in a few days though, so we'll go forward. Ooh, okay, that had a bit more. Also, we built the fifth survey vessel now, so that's good. And the Hornet has completed overhaul, and the Seeker... or the Royal survey vessel has also completed overhaul. Right, but let's have a look at the minerals first. Okay. It's almost 17 million uranium at 0.7. Um, Million carbon at 0.19 million tritanium at 0.9, mercassium 28 million mercassium at 0.1, million vendor at 0.2, 81,000 uranium at 0.1, and 2 million corundium at 0.1. So actually, if we combine these resources, we've got the neutronium covered. Not a massive amount, but it's still a decent enough that we can build up some shipyards and such. Actually, it's probably easier if we go for the mineralized text, although we need to refresh this first. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 of the minerals. So which one are we missing? It's not Mercus... Sorium. We don't have Sorium here. That is a problem. But it's not the worst problem. We can bring in fuel from elsewhere. Because we do still need Sorium for some of the ships, of course, but yeah, that's not necessarily the worst thing, because we still haven't surveyed all of the comets, have we? Are they uh, all comets? Okay, there's two comets that might have something. I'm pretty sure that we don't have any asteroids here, so we've got the two comets, and we've got the moons and the planets here. Now, of course, this planet might also have a little bit of something. It's not a terrible colony, of course, other than the fact that the Temperature is a bit toasty. Could have another 200 million population, so we'll see. I mean, it has pretty decent gravity, actually. 0.52. Right, so I believe we are already heading that way. But first things first, let's get the survey vessel for the faithful. We'll get that one going. So, that should be in the shipyard fleet. And then we'll just give it orders to survey locations, refuel at colony. I suppose we can put the if deployment time exceeded, uh, you can overhaul a colony. We'll see if that will. It should technically work, but it might have some problems sometimes deciding which one to do. But yeah, we'll put you there, and I believe I wanted to send you to. Echo sucks. Send a transit and go through the unexplored there, so we'll poke into a new system. And then I believe the survey vessel of the Royal Fleet, or the Royal Survey Vessel, can also go out. And you wanted to go through Nagel Ring and Nemung. 
I don't remember if we surveyed everything in there. I think we may have. Let me quickly pull that to the side and have a look at that. So, Nemo. Looks like we have surveyed everything there, and I believe... Well, it's probably easy to see from here, actually. There's still a little bit of surveying that needs to be done on the jump points there, so we'll just let you go there. That should be alright. And I suppose I could start building another survey vessel, although we don't have the components anymore for that. I'm pretty sure. If we have a look at the stockpile... Actually, we do. So apparently we built one without using components. Um... That's a bit unfortunate. Oh well. Not the end of the world. So we'll build that into the shipyard fleet. Mark 2B and use components. Create that task. I mean, having a bit extra server vessels isn't really a bad thing. And that's going to be done in April next year. So it's a bit less than a year now. So yeah, I think the previous survey vessel that we built was actually built without the components then. Well, that's my mistake. We could build more Hornets, of course, but again, I'm not entirely sure that these Hornets are really worth the effort right now. They might be a bit too heavily armed and too little engine, quite frankly, to be actually useful. But they are at least capable of uh, keeping the suppression up a little bit, at least in the early colonies. Right, so we found the minerals. Let's keep on going then, shall we? And another unit trained. Good. Sign you over there and I'll sign you in support position. Oh, and seeker. Okay, so the survey of the... Oh, right, yeah. See the deployment time. Didn't I send you back already? I did. Suppose I'll give you the standing orders. Oh, you actually already had that. Well, we'll see if that works or not. Well, you got Barracuda already, so that's good. And the faithful survey vessel is now heading to the north. Actually, I wonder how is the survey vessel of the has Alexandra's doing over here? They managed to survey a little bit of the area. There's still quite a bit of survey locations to go through though, so but we want to spread out into various systems, or more than one system at a time. So that we'll be able to find the good planets like we potentially, well, two planets combined are not that bad. With some auto rain mines on the more rich planet with the Venusian atmosphere should be fine and then build the colony up on the other one. That should be alright. Oh, and we found more minerals. Oh wow. Oh, wow. Let's uh, have a look at that. So it has not in the millions of the minerals in here, but we do have over 3.6 million sorium at point 0.1 accessibility. So not great. But at the same time, yeah, the accessibilities down here are pretty good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a colony over there and a colony over here. So it's going to be easier to track the ones that we need. But man, that's actually pretty good. We certainly want to colonize that area, so well, I think I'll start to... Actually, this, as weird as it sounds, might be able to have the mines be, or just regular mines to be used in here. This might be just uh, more or less the mining colony. And then this one will be the main production colony for this area. So this might be essentially our first sector going over there. Also known as duchies in this run, because we are a kingdom. Right, but that was actually rather good findings. Oh, right, they're still going for the comet there, and I believe there was another comet over there, but that's a bit too far away. Hopefully we'll find something good at the comet as well, because this seems pretty good system so far. It's not particularly a big system, to be fair, but hey, I'll take it. At least, it's not like the Echo sucks, which, if we have a quick look at that again. Um, uh, the... There's a gas giant there with Lagrange point, but unfortunately there is uh, the star with or two stars over here that have some interesting planets. Uh, it's about 230 billion kilometers away, so it's a bit far away. I mean, if we get a tug with very good fuel efficiency and long range, it might take like a decade to get there, but at least with this current uh, engine techs, 
but let's say we get there with a tug and a jump point stabilizer. We can build a Lagrange point there to get a shortcut, and then we can start colonizing. Well, if there's anything to colonize really there. But like start mining perhaps over there or something. So it's not all bad, but it will take some significant input at first to get there. Or investment of fuel rather than anything else. As well as it shouldn't be a problem. Ah, we got a defensive systems researcher. Pretty researcher at that. We don't research any of the defensive systems right now, but oh we got two of those now. Not bad. And the construction and production has 25% bonus, so that's good. We do not have a proper ground force uh, researcher yet. We've just got one that has two labs, so I'm trying to get the transport bay because we are going to need that soon enough. Especially once we start uh, colonizing the other planets. Also, uh, hold on, it was minimum. Is it this one? Yeah, so we started getting some infrastructure down here, but it's just long trip to go to here, so it's not enough to bring in colonists, but eventually we will get this to start mining some of the resources here. I'm not entirely sure, I mean, frankly, auto mines over here would be much better considering the infrastructure cost. Now, there is a little bit that we can do with the atmosphere to cool it down, because it's a bit toasty. So, if it's temperature of um, 194 degrees. It can be cooled down to a certain degree. I'm not entirely sure if it can be cooled down entirely. And of course, there's no water there at all right now. Of course, it would be too hot anyway. Uh, but yeah, there's... Oh, wow. Terraforming rate would be too bad, though. So, okay, terraforming over here should be rather easy. But yeah, it has pretty decent minerals. We'll probably start using those in due time. And uh, we... Uh, are already setting up the initial colony there. Okay, so the faithful are going past the system here. Some commander experience, that's good. Order's not possible. Did you or did you not? Uh, I suppose I'll give you the manual order to do your overhaul. I think the fuel takes priority there. Oh, per standing orders, okay, it's just one I should wait for the uh, build cycle there, but all the next turn, essentially. That's all right. So actually, I should probably do that for all of the survey fleets. Then, just in case, for the standing orders, you actually have that already. So do you? So do you? So all of them do have that. Good. Okay. So we don't need to worry about that anymore. I may have done that already in the previous session, but I forgot. Civilians are still trading a fair bit here, and our racial wealth is actually growing, so that's good. You know what? I will actually build a new... Not for the cargo one. Let's go for the shipyard fleet. Build a new colon ship. It's going to take a long while. And we'll build another cargo ship as well. So we can start doing a bit more logistics here. Deployment time exceeded. Right, so technically you should be heading back home now. Yep, you are. Oh, and we got the supply battalion, so we got the full brigade now. Also, the supply battalion probably needs to be put in rear echelon. And uh, used for replacements. That should be alright though. So yeah, the uh, turfing system was rather promising indeed. We'll see what sort of, uh, or which of the factions will take that, because the primary planet there, or the planet number four that we surveyed first, did uh, rise or accumulate quite a bit of interest from the factions. Between the recording session. Okay, ooh. True and thin. Let's have a look at the system here. So, ooh. Because the primary has nothing. You are operating the. Okay, 13.5 billion kilometers. That's not great, but it's not too bad. And you are. Okay, you're much closer, actually. Okay, so, ooh. 
desert planet with some liquid, methane and nitrogen, and then nitrogen and CO2. Okay. Rather the second okay, this is not quite as interesting. Let's have a look at the temperature is a bit toasty in the innermost planets. These planets are in the habitable zone, more or less, so that's actually pretty good. Which means that it just lacks the breathable atmosphere over there, and same over here. Well, over here the temperature is also a bit too high. But I think we can do something about that. But that is unfortunately going to have to be the end of this episode, because we have run out of time. But if you enjoyed this, please like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Also, check out the links down below in the description. But other than that, thank you very much for watching. Until next time, bye-bye.